Here now is Stevens Executive Vice uh, President and Senior Policy Advisor Mary Kissel. She's also former State Department Senior Advisor. Mary, good to see you. Hey, it's great to be back. Thanks for having me. We were just talking before we came on the air about all these American companies that are trying to get out of China, but here you have Apple that is very happy with their home in China. What do you make of that? Well, I don't know if Apple is entirely happy with their home in China. They're essentially a corporate hostage. I mean, let's be clear. Uh, Tim Cook was an engineer, then he went and he got his MBA, and he did a lot. Uh, he did what many other American CEOs did. He tied Apple's fortunes to China almost exclusively. And the board overseeing Apple let him do that. And now he has a big problem. And so he's trying to diversify, but he can't do it all at once because he's sunk a lot of capital into China. He also is so uh, tied to China right now that, again, he's, ba he's basically a corporate hostage. And so it's unfortunate. It's terrible decision making. I don't know what the board is doing. Um, but he's not alone in the conundrum that he's put, not just Apple employees and, and, and customers, but Apple shareholders. Mm -hmm. But what about the other, what's the thinking and the talking coming out of other corporate executives whose businesses are tethered to China right now? Yeah, I, I think a lot of your viewers would be surprised at some of the conversations that are going on in boardrooms across America. I talk to a lot of big investors, and I also talk to a lot of corporate boards. And you have companies like Apple, you know, the Fortune 100 companies that can't get out immediately. And then you have companies on the bottom end that make, say, buttons, and they're so low margin that they're stuck in China. Right. There are a lot of companies in the middle and a lot of investors that are saying, we've got to get out, we've got to diversify, we've got to move. And that process is, is happening right now. Good, get out of China. All right, let's move on because the National Security Council spokesman John Kirby says, there's still no date for a Biden call with President China, uh, with G, uh, China's President Xi. Listen to this. The president has said clearly he f believes it's important to keep the lines of communication with China open. He wants to have another conversation with President Xi. We'll move in that direction. No date for that call with no President date for Xi, that call. yeah. So, Mary, <laughs> Biden wants to have a call with Xi. Xi doesn't want to have a call with Biden. It seems like the power dynamic has shifted here. First of all, it's not President Xi, it's General Secretary Xi. <laughs> let, let, let's call him what he actually is. And you know what? It's important for nuclear powers to talk to one another. But as you say, it doesn't work if one side doesn't want to come to the table. So I think the Biden administration, their natural instinct is to conciliate and to talk. They think they're being reasonable and good and productive. The problem is that Beijing sees that as essentially a kowtow to the emperor. And we've been doing that now for two years. Yeah. Recall the treatment uh, that Jake Sullivan and, and Anthony Blinken got when they met their counterparts in Alaska. They got yelled at, and then John Kerry went over to the mainland for a Zoom call. They didn't even have his counterpart in the room. So we're doing this repeatedly. It's a sign of weakness, and it just will encourage Xi Jinping uh, to expand, really, what can only be called a very aggressive global agenda. Mm. A, a great arguably a greater sign of weakness, the fact that lawmakers, they attack the CEO of TikTok but can't ban the app, and now <laughs> Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, watch this, has made her debut on this spyware app over the weekend. Watch this. Do I believe TikTok should be banned? No. Why should TikTok not be banned? First of all, I think it's important to discuss how unprecedented of a move this would be. The United States has never before banned a social media company from existence, from operating in our borders. School her, please, Mary Kissel. <laughs> well, first of all, I never thought I would say this, but she's actually correct. We have never really banned a social media app. Where she's incorrect is that it's not a social media app per se. It's a weapon. And that's how we have to think about it and discuss it. And you know what? Um, the United States is a very vigorous, vibrant democracy because we have a hard time doing things like this. That speaks well of our country. But we, there is a new reality that Republicans and Democrats are grappling with, which is that, you know, in the past, you'd have military weapons that would then be developed for commercial uses. Now you have commercial things that can be weaponized, right? And so we have to, we're going to have to figure out how to deal with this, not just for TikTok, but for many other applications that China has put on our phones that are used for nefarious purposes. So we need to come up with some kind of framework here for how to think about this, how to talk about it, but we have to call this what it is. Not social media, it's a weapon. The longer we wait, the closer we get to 2024, nothing will happen because kids will be angry. Mary Kissel, thank you for joining us, I appreciate it. She's okay. 
at TikTok being used on the American people, the way the similar technology is used on the Uyghurs in communist China mm. as slave labor in concentration camps. She wants the same to be done to the American youth. That's it. Ooh. Ugh. Love you, Mary Kelsey.